Our dinosaur of the day is Gigantosaurus carolini, as requested from our Facebook fan, Tori. So this dinosaur is not to be confused with Gigantosaurus, which was a sauropod discovered in England. This one, its name means giant southern lizard, and it was a carnivore. The Carolini name came from Reuben Carolini, who was an amateur fossil hunter who found Gigantosaurus in the Rio Lime formation of Patagonia in 1993. And the specimen was first described in the journal Nature in 1995. At the time, it was thought to be the largest carnivorous dinosaur. The paleontologists Rodolfo Coria and Leonardo Salgado were the ones who named Gigantosaurus. So again, Gigantosaurus was found near Via El Chocon, and that area now has a Gigantosaurus statue beside the road. They're very proud of it. If you want to see the original fossils, they're in the Carmen Funes Museum in Nequin, Argentina. But there's also lots of replicas around the world. The first Gigantosaurus skeleton found was 70% complete, and it included the skull, pelvis, leg bones, and most of the backbone. It weighed about 6.5 tons and was 13 feet tall at the hip and 40 to 41 feet long. A second Gigantosaurus skeleton that was found later was estimated to be about 8% bigger. It was about 43 feet long and weighed 8 tons. And it was famous because, of course, at the time it was discovered, it was thought to be the largest carnivore, which meant that it was bigger than T-Rex, or at least people thought it was bigger than T-Rex. But this might not have actually been the case. It may have been heavier than T-Rex, but more slender, and had a small brain for its size, about the size of a banana. But it did have a good sense of smell. It had a large skull around 6 feet long, which may be one of the largest known skulls of theropods. And although it might not be the largest theropod, it's the largest carnivore of the Cretaceous era in South America. No complete skeleton of Gigantosaurus has been found yet, and there's no other remains that show its various stages of development, so there's no juvenile or, you know, different ages of Gigantosaurus, so it's hard to tell its growth pattern. But Gigantosaurus had sharp 8-inch teeth with serrated edges, and three-fingered hands and two short arms, as well as a thin pointed tail. It was bipedal and had powerful legs, it could possibly move up to 31 miles per hour, and it can make quick turns while running. It may have hunted titanosaurids such as Argentinosaurus, and there have been other titanosaurs found near Gigantosaurus such as Andosaurus and Lamasaurus. It wouldn't have been able to take on an adult titanosaur alone, so it may have hunted in packs to take down this large prey. When it had its prey, it would have used its teeth to slice through it, which is common for its family, Carcharodontosaurids. The bones of an Argentinosaurus would have been too large to crunch with their teeth, so Gigantosaurus would have had to bite on softer tissue and raked its teeth across the flesh. Then it would wait for an Argentinosaurus or other Titanosaur to lose blood or be infected and die, and Gigantosaurus may have targeted leg muscles to sever a tendon and cripple the Titanosaur. Francois Terrier said in 2005 that Gigantosaurus may have had a bite force three times less than a T-Rex's, but it was better at inflicting wounds. Just like many carnivores, it may have been opportunistic and scavenged when it could instead of hunted. And interestingly, seven skeletons of Mapusaurus, which is a close cousin that looked very similar to Gigantosaurus, was found in the same area as Gigantosaurus, which means that they died near each other and raises the possibility that they lived in a community, although there's nothing for sure. Gigantosaurus has appeared in pop culture. One example is it rescued the protagonists in James Gurney's Dinotopia, rescued them from a T-Rex, actually. And it's also in the fifth Land Before Time movie, as well as the 2008 movie Journey to the Center of the Earth. I'm sorry if you've seen the fifth Land Before Time movie. <laughs> Everything after the first one is garbage. <laughs> I wouldn't say garbage, but definitely not as good. Yeah, pretty disappointing, even for a dinosaur enthusiast. <laughs> Littlefoot never disappoints. So as Sabrina mentioned... Gigantosaurus was in the Carcharodontosaurid family, and Carcharodontosaurid means shark-toothed lizard, and obviously they're a group of carnivorous theropods. Ernst Stromer named the Carcharodontosauridae family in 1931. Some Carcharodontosaurids include Giganotosaurus, 
Mapusaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, and Tyrannotitan. All of those are similar in size or even a little bit bigger than T. rex. Carcharodontosaurids may have been the largest predators in the early and middle Cretaceous along with the Spinosaurids. Carcharodontosaurids, they are around in both Gondwana and Laurasia, which were the two supercontinents back in the Cretaceous when Pangaea was splitting up. And in Laurasia, the part that's currently North America had Acrocanthosaurus, and in Asia there was Shao Chilong. In 2006, when Maposaurus was discovered, Rodolfo Coria and Phil Curry named a subfamily of Carcharodontosauridae called Gigantosaurinae for the most advanced species from South America, which were more closely related than the ones from Africa and Europe.